Good morning students, this is Mr. Boscarini and for today's lesson we're going to talk about prefixes. As we saw in class, physics deals with uh, physical quantities which are really really big, sometimes, sometimes really really small, which means we're going to deal with numbers which are really really small and really really big, which means that you in turn will have to deal with numbers which are incredibly large and astonishingly small. And more often than not, that means that you have to, we have to devise together ways to represent these numbers in an easier way uh, without the need of writing a lot of trailing zeros or a lot of decimals. One of these ways is by using prefixes. So the learning objective of today's lesson will be for you to be able to use prefixes to write numbers large and small. Which of course leads us to the question, what is a prefix? Now, before giving you a definition of what a prefix is, let me show you a few examples. For instance, let's imagine that my school iPad has a memory of 32 gigabytes or gigabytes if you prefer. Let's imagine that your backpack, hopefully not because that's really heavy, has a mass, not a weight, of 5 kilograms. And we all know, at least I hope you all know, that the Atlantic Ocean floor is spreading approximately by 2 centimeters every year. Now, again, I hope you all know that the byte is a unit of measurement for computer memory that gram is a unit of measurement for mass and the meter is a unit of measurement for length. So what are these giga, giga, kilo and centi? Well, these are prefixes. These are words which we attach at the beginning before, this is the meaning of pre, uh, before the word to change its value. Sometimes to make it bigger, sometimes to make it smaller. And here's a list, a big list, but not in any way complete, of the most common prefixes. And we'll start with this middle one here, the base unit. Base unit means there's no prefix, and that means we're changing the value of our quantity. That corresponds to a unit, or if we use the powers of 10, of 0. Going up, deca means 10 times our unit. We can write deca or we can abbreviate that in DA, which corresponds to 10 or in powers of 10 going up still. Hecto or just H, that corresponds to 100 or 10 to the power of 2. This is one prefix we're going to meet a lot of times. A kilo, actually we met it already, or just chi, that corresponds to 1000 or 10 to the power of 3. And what is interesting, up to now we move by adding 10, now we go by adding 1,000. Because the next one, the mega, or big M, is a million, or 10 to the power of 6, still is the giga, or giga, big G, or 1 billion, 10 to the power of 9. The list does not stop here, it actually goes on for quite a bit. Okay, so, and up to now we've seen how to make our quantity bigger. How, what if we want to make it smaller? And this is the second part of our list here. So, again, starting from the base unit, divided by 10, so a tenth or 0 0.1 or 10 to the minus 1, that is a deci or small d. And it's really, really important that you understand this is a tenth. Going down, divided by 10 still, 0 0.01, so a hundredth, or 10 to the minus 2. This is the centi, or centi, small c. And I hope you can see the pattern here, no? Times 10, divided by 10. Times 100, divided by 100. And going on, times 1,000, then we get divided by 1,000. The milli, or small m, this is a very... Like the K is, very, is a very common prefix, the same way M is also a very common prefix, which corresponds to 0 0.001 or 10 to the minus 3. And again, you see the pattern. 
until now we went down by factors of 10, now we go down by factors of 1000. So a milli divided by a thousand is a micro. And you see this strange letter, this is a Greek letter here. Okay, and that corresponds to a million for 10 to the minus 6. And again, divided by a thousand, we get the nano or small n, a billion or 10 to the minus n. This list is by no means complete. I will give you the link to the NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, where you find the complete list of prefixes. Okay, now we know the meaning of these prefixes, but you might want to ask, okay, but how do we change from one prefix to another? Okay, in this video, we'll try to guide you in the process of going from one prefix to another for the same quantity. The first thing you need to know, if you're going from a large quantity to a small by, because of course, you're having a big thing, you're going to uh, break it up in smaller chunks, so you'll end up with more stuff. Uh, plainly said. So, for instance, uh, you might want to ask, I mean, this is a very common question, oh, how many centimeters are in five kilometers? No, actually, this is not a common question, but it's something I might want to ask you. Now, now you have to think, and I will show you in the next slide how to remember how many steps you have to take. But let's do it um, by heart. So, from kilometers, you have one step to go in hecto, another for deca, another one for the base unit, you shouldn't forget to, the step of the base unit, another step for uh, decimeter, and finally a step for centimeter, that means five steps. So, if you want to know how many centimeters are in five kilometers, you get this five and you multiply it by one, followed by ha as many zeros as the number of steps, in this case, five zero. So you get five times a hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. So your answer is five hundred thousand centimeters in five kilometers. On the other hand, if you want to go from a small unit to a large unit, of course you have to divide because you need, once you group up small things to make a bigger one, you'll end up with less stuff. So, how many hectograms, oh, this is, means hectograms, are in two, 200 centigrams? Again, what do you have to do? You have to count the steps, but this time you have to divide. So, let's do this thing together again. So, you go from centigrams to decigram, that's one step, to grams, another step, to decagrams, a first step, and a fourth step to get to hectograms. So this time you get your number, 200 divided by 1, followed by how many zeros you had for steps. So you had four steps, that means you divide by 10,000, gives you 0 0.02 hectograms in 200 centigrams. Okay, at this point you might be asking yourself, how can I remember these prefixes? And as you can see here, for instance, there are some sentences or songs or poems that can help you remembering the prefixes. And you can look at it, there are many, many ways you can do this, but probably the most famous one is this one you see over here. King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. And again, if you look at it, you might find also variation of the same sentence, but I will stick to this one for today. And as you can see, the initial of each word correspond to one of the, uh, I would say, the main prefixes. So from kilo all the way down to milli. So we're skipping mega, giga. And what is important? So you see K stands for kilo, H for hecto, D for deca, B for base, so no prefix. D for deci, C for centi, and M for lead. Now what is important? is every time you climb up this ladder, so you're going from a small unit to a big unit, every step you take up this ladder, doesn't matter where you start, 10, 2 times, so that means divided by 100, 3 steps, you divide by 1,000, and so on and so forth. But this, mind you, applies only in this ladder, because then the next steps, they go by 1,000. Okay, so be careful. The same we can say 
when we go down, we climb down the ladder. Now, in this case, every step down means you multiply by 10. And we're going to see many, many examples on how to convert from one unit to another. But for today, that's all. Thanks for watching. See you next time from Mr. Boscherini.